Hey guys, what's up? It's Crazy back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a super simple inventory that will lurk for any game you make. So if you're making a survival game, if you're making an overhead game, a platformer, this inventory will literally work with anything. It's pretty simple, so let's not waste any time and dive right in. So first things first, you're going to need two sprites. One called player, and one called inventory. Your player just needs to be able to move around, and yeah. It doesn't really matter how you make a move, he just needs to be able to move. And then your inventory needs to have a certain few of costumes. First you're going to need your actual inventory. I'm personally just using the Minecraft top bar. And then you're going to need a white box. That will be our selector, so we can select certain items in our inventory. And make sure the box can fit perfectly fit around the squares in your inventory, else it'll look weird. Now you don't have to use the Minecraft top bar, you can use one of your own. But I do recommend keeping all the slots perfectly distributed uh, about these, each other. And then you're gonna need some items to actually put in your uh, inventory, which I'm just using some Minecraft items, so yeah. After that, let's create some variables. First, um, make sure that all of these variables we're gonna be about to create are for this sprite only. So yeah, first things first, create a variable called item name, or sorry, item ID. Another variable called drop X for the sprite only as well. And again, all of these are for the sprite only. Another one called drop Y. Another one called I. Another one called item selected, I think it's called index for the sprite only. After you create that, we can create a custom block that will allow us to add items to our inventory. So come over here and create a new block and call it add item. This will take an input value called item name. After that, we need to check if our inventory isn't already full. So we're going to check if our inventory is less than the amount of our slots our inventory has. Which I forgot, we need to create another variable, which is a list. Make sure to make this one for all sprites. And name it inventory. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the length of our inventory is less than how many slots our inventory has. My inventory has nine slots, so I need to make sure that my inventory or the length of my inventory is less than nine. If so, then we're gonna add item name to inventory. Next, we're gonna make another custom block that'll allow us to spawn items in our world to pick up. This one takes three input values. Item name, X and Y. The item name will be the item we want to spawn and X and Y is where in the world we want to spawn the item. And all we have to do for this one is set some variable values. So what we need to do is set item ID to item name. We need to set drop x to x and set drop y to y and then after that we need to create a clone of myself and then we need to create one final custom block which allows us to drop items out of our inventory into the world so we'll call it drop item and add three inputs like before and these will be the same things as spawn item so item name x and y and then what we need to do is we need to grab an if block and see if our inventory actually contains the item we're attempting to drop. So if inventory contains item name, then we're going to call our spawn item block and pass in item name, X and Y in that order. And then finally, we're going to delete one of inventory, but instead we want to delete item hashtag of thing in inventory. And all you want to do is just place thing with item name and insert it into the block like so. And here you go, we have all our custom blocks we'll need to make this inventory. After that, let's grab a when I start as clone block and then grab a show block and then we need to set item id to item id this clone part might be slightly confusing on why we're drawing certain things but once we get ahead it'll make a bit more sense after that we need to go to drop x and drop y point in a random direction that way when you drop an item it can look random and kind of like it's just kind of fell out you don't have to add this part but i personally do um i think it adds some randomness to it and not make it look so uh, repetitive when dropped items are dropped. After that we need to set our size. This is personal preference of how big you want the items in your world, but I found with my Minecraft items the size of 300 works well. After that we need to grab a 4 over block and I'm a, I personally like to make mine go to the back layer. And then we need to switch costume to item ID. After that we need to check if we're touching the player. If we are, I like to make uh, set the brightness of this object to 100. And also make sure that this is an if then else block, not just an if block. If you do this brightness part, make sure to put um, set your brightness back to zero in the else block area. But back to inside of the if area, we also want to check if we're touching the player and we press the E key to pick it up. And we also want to make sure that our inventory isn't full. So basically you can just duplicate this check over here. So make sure the length of your inventory is less than the amount of things you have. 
like so. So if the E key is pressed and our inventory isn't full, then do our code. And the code we want to do is add item, item ID, and then we want to delete this clone. After that, we need to create another custom block and name this one update UI. This takes no inputs or anything like so, but just make sure this one runs without screen refresh. First things first, make this one show itself and you're gonna have to add the pen to your project. After you do that, hit erase all, and then we'll need to go to a position. Now this position might change based on how big your inventory is and where your slots are, so just mess around. So basically though, this coordinate right here will be where your base inventory will sit on your screen. So I found that zero and negative 130 is a good coordinates for mine. After that, we wanna set our size to 80%. And again, this just depends on how big your inventory is. After that, we want to stamp and put our inventory right here. Then we want to set the size of how big our items you want them to be in your inventory. Again, with my small pixel art Minecraft items, 250 worked for that. And then we want to go to the first slot in my inventory, which for me was 165 and a negative 130. And again, this will change depending on your inventory and stuff like that. So again, mess around until this works. After that, we want to set the I variable we made earlier to one. After that, we want to repeat 10 times, but not actually 10. We just want to repeat for our whole inventory. So repeat length of inventory. After that, we want to switch our costume to the item in the inventory. So hit switch costume to item hashtag, or my bad, item one of inventory, and insert I into it. After that, we want to stamp once again. Then we'll change our X by 40. But again, this value right here will change depending on how far apart your slots are in your inventory. Mine are only 40 pixels apart, so if change X by 40 works well. After that, we're going to change our I by one. And then outside of this replay block, we're going to set our size. So I'm gonna set my size to 80%. And then we're gonna to wanna to switch our costume to our selector. Oh, and one thing I forgot to do right up here, when we set our size to 80%, right after we erase all switch your costume to your my uh, your in your inventory mine's called minecraft heart bar as this is the hot bar for minecraft anyways back down to the very bottom here when we set our size to 80 percent and we switch our costume to our selector which is this costume right here after that we need to go to a coordinates which will just be these coordinates that you made up here so i'm just going to grab this block and bam so basically the very first slot of your inventory then after that we want to change our x by item selected index minus one multiplied by, and I found that 42 worked for me. 42 will just be um, uh, how far your slots are from one another. So again, up here I used 40. It probably just worked best if you use that, but I found 42 worked best for me. Again, you will have to mess with these coordinates um, since you probably won't have the same exact inventory. And then after that, we need to grab a wind green flag clicked forever, change, item selected index by and grab a subtraction sign and we're going to subtract some key inputs. What we're going to do here is allow you to scroll through your inventory that way you can drop individual items that you want. So basically what we need to do is subtract um, our right arrow by our left arrow. This allows us to use our arrow keys to move through our inventory. After that we need to grab a if block and we need to make sure that if our item selected index is greater than our inventory size, so if my item selected index is greater than 9, we need to then loop around the inventory. So I need to set item selected index back to one. You can actually duplicate this. And I wanna also make sure that if my item selected index is less than one, so we went too far left, I wanna set it to nine. So basically it allows the loop through the inventory both directions. And then after that, I'm gonna wait until we haven't pressed the key anymore. So wait until right arrow key and make sure this is not. So we need to wait until not right arrow key and not left arrow key like so. So we need to make sure that our right key arrow pressed is no longer being pressed and our left arrow key is no longer being pressed. That way we can just hold our arrow keys and fly through our inventory. Next we need to make it so we can actually drop items. So all we need to do is grab a when green flag clicked with a forever loop in it and check if we press our G key. After uh, we check if our G key has been pressed, grab your drop item block. And we don't just want to drop item, what we want to drop is item one of inventory with and then insert your item selected index like so. Insert that into the first slot of drop item. 
and then in these last two variables or input sections what you want to do is grab backdrop of stage but don't want to do backdrop of stage short course change it from stage to player and change it from stage to x position duplicate this and also get the y position and then insert them right here we then want to wait until we aren't pressing the key that way you can just spam your inventory and drop all your items by accident like so and this will allow us to drop items and the final thing to do is go in green flag clicked delete all of your inventory and then add a forever loop and what we want to do is call our update ui now if you run this and you test it you'll don't really have any method of testing it so what we need to do is add a simple method of us spawning items in that's when the spawn item custom block can come in handy so all i'm going to do is check if our mouse is down inside of the same block code here this is just for purely testing and don't put this in your actual game but what we want to check is if my mouse is down now i'm going to spawn an item i'm going to spawn how about we spawn a pickaxe and i want to spawn this at my mouse position after that we want to wait until we're no longer pressing my mouse down like so basically we'll press it spawn the item and then wait until we're not pressing it and now if you start your project you'll see that your inventory will appear down here and if you press your arrow keys you can actually move through your inventory like so and you can see that it loops through and if i click my mouse button we'll be able to spawn some items around and i can go pick those items up like so and if i press g on an empty slot nothing happens but if i move over to over my items and i press g we can then drop those items so everything is working correctly and that's completely it for this tutorial it's actually surprisingly not that complex or that big to do and it's pretty small and using these handy custom blocks you should be able to easily add this into more of your game and go beyond just a simple tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want to support me and help other people find this stuff as well please consider liking or subscribing to the video but at the least please like the video as it helps push it out to other people and get this video out there anyways that's enough for me guys and i'll see you guys in the next one